business to come before finance? Let's start. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I forgot. We had an item that was added to the agenda on finance legal uh, affairs. It's to hear a presentation on the frivolous ethics complaint filed against Councilman Jones. Uh, with that, I'll turn the floor over to uh, City Attorney Johnson to handle this item, and uh, I appreciate order in the, uh, in the in the room. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Um, ladies and gentlemen, generally, ethics investigations are confidential. However, under Title 42, Section 1141, there is an exception that allows a person who's named to execute what's called a written request allowing disclosure of facts relating to the investigation. At this time, I'd like Nancy to file into the record uh, a written waiver signed by Mr. Silver and by Mr. Jones before we get started. <sighs> Mr. Fowler, the way I wanted to do it was just to uh, present directly to Mr. Jones and let him respond in the manner that he sees fit to my questions. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. I, I really don't have any knowledge of this other part of this one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jones, sir, would you uh, well state your name for the record, please? <coughs> Full name? Yes. Jerry Wayne Jones, Jr. Are you currently a member of the Alexandria City Council? Yes, I am. How long have you been? December the 13th. And what district do you represent? District 3. Now, um, in the recent past, has it come to your knowledge that an ethics complaint was filed against you? Correct. Have you had a chance to review that document? I have. And do you have knowledge, personal knowledge of facts which would refute the allegations in the document? I do. Okay, I want to start off. Do you have a copy of it in front of you? No, I've reviewed it several times. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and what, what I'll do, Councilman Jones, is I'll just read the, the relevant paragraphs and then you can come forward with the uh, facts you wish to present after I finish. Okay. Why don't you give us a copy of what yeah, you have? Yeah, can we all get a copy of it? You wouldn't have your hand. Nancy, can you make, Please yeah. make them one? Well, six more copies. Yeah. Just Why? Thank you. What is, what, what is yeah, could you please tell her to please make sure she makes more copies? I want to make sure that the media has a copy of this documentation. So, I think the public has a right to know. Ms. Jones, getting that? Yes. <clears throat> Each council yes, member have a copy of. That's not it. That's, 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 oh, no, that's, that's the sorry. next exhibit. Yeah, that's something next. That's one something. Go ahead. Let's go. That's okay, number two. Let's well, yeah. wait till everybody has it in their hand. We'll take a minute. I would prefer to get it before the okay. meeting. At least we have notice of it. Even if we would have gotten it before the meeting, many of us wouldn't have read it until minutes before. So it really doesn't matter when we get it. 
we don't read our documentation until the meeting actually starts. That's so not it's no need. Excuse me, just say. It's so true. This is at the prerogative, as I understand it, of Mr. Jones. This is actually not a council matter. It's really this not. This is something that he's doing. Excuse me, I'm speaking, sir. This is something that he's doing to respond to an ethics complaint that was lodged against him, and he has a perfect right to do so, and he can do it in whatever manner he wishes to. And, and, uh, does everybody have a copy? You have a copy. You have a copy? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I just have a copy. Come on, let's let him do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no, I don't we have, have a copy now. Okay. <coughs> May I proceed? <coughs> I'm sorry. May I proceed? Just a second. Mr. Jones, Johnson, did you have something to comment? Oh, uh, yes. I just want to make clarification for the record. I just want to make clear that any record and documentation that is received by any member of this council, myself, uh, no one can say who reads and not reads. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Johnson. I have a comment, please. Mr. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, and, and again, I definitely hope that that comment that Councilman Jones made that he was speaking for himself. I was not speaking for myself. Actually, I read all the documentation on the Wednesday when it gets in, but there are those who on this council do not touch their books until minutes before the meeting. And Mr. that needs to be said so we can carry on with the meeting Mr. Jones, as we'd like to. Well, that wish. doesn't need to be said unless you're speaking for yourself. It's the truth. We'll have order, please. No, it's not the truth. We'll have order, please. We're now addressing an ethics complaint. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson and Mr. Jones, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Jones, I want to direct your attention first to paragraph one, and I'll read it for those of you who don't have it. It says, ladies and gentlemen, on January 24, 2012, Alexandria, Louisiana, City Attorney Charles Chuck Johnson <coughs> placed upon the Finance and Legal Affairs Committee for it to consider a resolution ratifying and acknowledging all official acts of the newly appointed District 3 Councilman Jerry Jones since his date of appointment, January, uh, December 13, 2011. Now, uh, Mr. Jones, that resolution that's referred to in that first paragraph, that was placed on the agenda by me, correct? Correct. Not by yourself, correct? Correct. And prior to placing it on the agenda, did I discuss with you an Attorney General's opinion 080015-0 involving the town of Walker? Yes, you did. And if I direct your attention to the third from the last paragraph, where it says, while in strict compliance with RS 42-141, requires that a new officer take his oath within 30 days after receipt of his commission or within 30 days after receipt of his commission certificate, whichever is later, the statute does, not con does contemplate an earlier oath. As RS 42-141 further states that an oath taken prior to the date shown on the commission shall be deemed to have been taken on and shall be effective on and after the date on which the term of office for which the office is taken commences. In order to avoid any ambiguity, these are your key words, we suggest that after these new officers be resworn after receipt of their commissions in accordance with RS 42-141, thereafter we suggest that the actions of the new members taken at the January 14th, 08 meeting be acknowledged and ratified by the board. You were aware of both of those paragraphs, correct? I definitely was. And on advice of counsel, I ask that they be placed on the agenda for a vote. Correct. And at the time they were placed on the agenda, you understood that the resolution was not mandatory and that I suggested it out of an abundance of caution as per this opinion. Correct. All right. <clears throat> Next paragraph. A video of this meeting as well as the following city council, the full following city council meeting at which the <coughs> final vote took place is maintained by the city of Alexandria. Is that true? Correct. It was video. Okay. At that January meeting, Mr. Jones voted yes on this motion that applied to himself, thus giving the motion its passing vote. Is that true? That would be correct. The vote was four to three. Is that true? That would be correct. And would have failed had it not been for your vote for 
I don't know Correct. what that means. For vote himself. for himself. I, 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 I guess he means your you mean. vote. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next paragraph. Oh. Ratifying and acknowledging all official acts of Mr. Jones besides his place on the city council, comma, also extends his ability to receive payment as a city councilman back to December 13, 2011 which is, and I'm reading this the way it's worded, <clears throat> which is when he was first appointed when according to Councilwoman Mitzi Gibson, <coughs> the Louisiana Secretary of State's office told her that Mr. Jones's appointment did not become official until days later. Did anyone from the Secretary of State ever tell you that you were not validly appointed on December 13, 2011? No, they did not, especially when I saw, when I went down to Bad Rouge that following week and actually spoke face to face with one of the people that works in that office. And you, you did subsequently receive a commission from the Secretary of three State. Three times. I received three different certificates and three different ID cards telling me the same thing three times. And based upon <coughs> the representations that I made to you as counsel um, regarding Title 42-141, did you believe that your commission related back to the effective date of your appointment Correct. as per the statute? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Attorney Next. Johnson, excuse me, can I stop you for just a second before we go too far? When Mr. you reference, can I be allowed to finish my presentation, finish presentation and then, and then we can, can ask, ask questions. questions? Okay, I just don't want the public to be confused on something. Okay. I just they wanted have been to clarify. Confused, but I'll continue. All right. Next paragraph. It's not the legality of Mr. Jones's December appointment that complainants object to. It is his vote on this January resolution. Mr. Jones's initial appointment to the city council was made on December 13, 2011 by a tie vote broken by Alexandria Mayor Jacques Roy. Pursuant to the Alexandria Home Rule Charter, is that true? That would be correct. After Mr. Jones was immediately sworn into the office, Mr. Jones, whom Mr. Silver had voted for that same day, cast his vote for the 90-year-old Harry Silver as president of the city council. Will you stipulate that Mr. Silver is 90? I, are you 90? <laughs> I, are you 90 years old? Is Thank there, according to my birth certificate, he's not. Okay. That right. That's correct. All right, oh. Mr. Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Any of that factually incorrect, what I just said? Um, as of thus far, it's actually correct thus far. You keep going, that's when it gets right. interesting. Next, Next paragraph, as Mr. Silver now makes the appointment to the various council committees, that effectively killed the council's unfinished investigation into the mayor's expenditures on the Alexandria Fulton Hotel of December 1st, 2011. At any time, Mr. Jones, did Mr. Silver ever discuss with you that in exchange for his vote, you would agree to kill the council investigation into the Fulton expenditure? I hope he wouldn't because if that was the case, he put me on the wrong committee because finance and legal could do that and I'm not on that committee. Y'all yeah, didn't have a deal like that where he agreed to, to vote you on the council and in exchange you would kill an investigation. That's my question. No. Okay. Next paragraph. Upon information and belief, and although it cannot be proven by them, complainants would also like this board to investigate that Mr. Jones may have purchased and even had a charge account for clothing at Mr. Silver's store prior to Mr. Silver's vote for Mr. Jones on December 13, 2011. Now I ask you, Mr. Jones, have you ever had a charge account at Weiss and Goring? No. Have you ever purchased uh, clothing from his store prior to December 13, 2011? Yes. How did you pay for that? Credit card through household bank and cash. Did Mr. Silver give you any type of discount? <laughs> no, but I wish he would have. Did, did you pay the fair market value for the clothing? Or what I, Mr. I Silver thought was the fair market Yeah, I would say what he thought was the fair market value. I paid that. I purchased two shirts at $75 a piece and a pair of loafers that were $149. 
Have, have you ever bought a suit of any kind from I believe the, they're referring to the suit that I have on right now. It seems to get so much credibility and so much clout that I decided to wear it today. And if they're referring to where I got this suit from, unless you own uh, stock investments in Dillard's, I can't help what he invests his money in. But I would hope that you wouldn't invest your money in a competitor. Last paragraph, um, and then I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Jones. Complainants urge this board to open investigations into the votes made by Mr. Jones and Mr. Silver, both city councilmen for the city of Alexandria, Louisiana, under the provisions of RS 42.11.13 and 42.11.16 and any other laws that the board may find them to have violated. Have you violated e either of those provisions or any other laws, sir? No, I have not. This complaint is being lodged via affidavit and oath by these two complaints, and a copy is being sent to Mr. Jones and Mr. Silver via certified mail. <coughs> the consideration is most appreciated, and then it's signed by the uh, complainants, the attorney for the complainants, and the last page is an affidavit of the complaints. And Mr. Jones, I think you wanted to make a just a second. Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, for those of us who are not acquainted uh, <laughs> with the LR LSR, LSA RS 421113 and 421116, could you tell us what those are? That, I don't. That's generally the. Uh, the code of ethics, and it describes the types of transactions that public officials can engage in. It, it generally goes to doing business with the city, having family members who are uh, related to public officials who do business with the city, and of course, none of that applies to Mr. Jones. Okay. And uh, there's one more document you refer to. Would you read that, please? The last page? The last page, yes. Those at home don't have all of this. So. It looks like an affidavit. Uh, it says, State of Louisiana Parish of Rapids, before me, the undersigned authorities personally came and appeared, Jules Green and Gail Underwood, who after being first duly sworn by me, did depose and state that the information contained in the foregoing complaint is true and correct to the best of their knowledge, information, and belief, <coughs> thus sworn to and subscribed before me. Notary Public, Alexandria, Louisiana, 10th day of February, 2012, Greg Amon, Notary Public. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Ms. Fowler, I'll ask that um, I'm able to make my comments after I allowed such people to make theirs. Okay. Ms. Gibson? Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Fowler. Um, I want the public to understand that, again, this particular um, attorney general's opinion that Attorney Johnson is referring to is for the town of Walker back in 2008. And the town of Walker is ruled by the Larson Act, and the city of Alexandria is ruled by, ruled by Home Rule Charter. So it is a different opinion for a different type of run government. So I just want the public to understand that. I, I think that's Thank been you. clearly established more yeah, than once. I wanted to make sure that it was Certainly. today since we brought it back oh, up. No. Thank you. I have a copy of the pen right here. What Ms. Gibson is omitting <coughs> to tell you uh, is that that opinion has two parts to it. The first part of the opinion discusses the appointment <coughs> process for a Larson Act municipality. That process does not apply to us because we are home of a charter city. Section 2 of our charter, I don't know if it's 204 or 203, sets out the procedure where there's a vacancy on the Alexandria City Council. That procedure was followed in this place, in this case, for Mr. Jones' appointment. The second part of the opinion discusses when the commission becomes effective. Mr. Jones took office December 13th, you said? Correct. Title 42, that 141 at 6 states that when he receives the commission, the commission is effective to the date of the appointment. So he's a city councilman from the date Mayor Roy broke the tie. <coughs> Ms. Gibson uh, uh, neglected to give you that analysis. <coughs> Interesting. Interesting. Thank Mr. you, Johnson. A Attorney Johnson. Um, and I'd also public. like to add yeah. that I know okay. how, I know how my. Uh, colleagues and possibly the public sometimes thinks uh, my name is in this particular um, 
ethics board request for investigation, but I did not learn of this document until Monday morning myself. I, I think it was simply referring to an action you took. Correct, but I just want to make sure everyone understands. I think understood. everybody understands that. Thank you. Mr. Lauren. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think this is a waste of time. <coughs> mm. And understand, we're not the ethics board. Yeah, if there's a problem, the ethics board. if there's a problem, then you need to have a hearing in Baton Rouge, not city council time. Now, I know you want to clear your name, but this is not the proper venue to do that. Yes. And, and, and taking time out for something like this and asking them questions, what well, did you do this? No, this is the first time I've seen the letters, first time I've heard about the complaint. But you're taking city council time over something <coughs> we have no jurisdiction, no venue over. I think it's a waste of time. Now, if this matter goes to Baton Rouge and you have a hearing, then you need to address those issues then, not take up our time on issues we can't address at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a little keep going. You want, a, you want the uh, public to? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. I had, uh, uh, I think Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, I didn't see your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Fallon. One of the things I would like to clarify, and maybe Mr. Gibson and Mr. J Johnson can answer this question, is that at the end of the day, through all this discussion, based on the complaints that's been filed with the Ethics Commission, they will make whatever we're saying here today, they will make the final decision, you know, beyond what's discussed here based on the complaints itself. I just want to make sure that's clarified for the people at home and the people that's sitting here listening out there because we can go on all day and discuss this. But one thing that's clear, and I want the public to know and the media to know, is that the ethics board, once the complaint is filed, is they are the ones who will look at what has taken place and what has been filed. Am I correct? <coughs> can we get an answer from the attorney? Yes, you are correct. Okay. But I'll, I'd also like the public to note that the council has taken time in the past to discuss ethics complaints filed against the mayor. So that uh, if, if they can take their time to do it against the mayor, then I think Mr. Jones should be entitled to uh, his own rebuttal time. Uh, one one other thing, uh, Mr. Jones has not asked for a hearing. Uh, he's not asked for a decision. He's not asked for a vote on anything. He has simply asked to be able to present a response to a complaint that was filed against him. And as I understand it, he has a perfect right to do so. Therefore, we're giving him the opportunity to do that. Is someone else, Mr. No. Millard? is fine. Ms. Gibson? I've you. got something. Um, for <coughs> us to, to all understand, the city council, this particular cycle, going into our two-week cycle, we received three different um, city Council Committee agendas. Um, our normal way of procedure is that as of 2 o'clock on the Wednesday prior to our meeting is when all council have to have in whatever items that they want on the agenda. This agenda has been changed three times. The week prior to, I had two items that I wanted to be in committee and they got to the clerk actually after the 2 o'clock deadline and I was told that I had to wait two weeks before those items could be placed on there. They are on there now, but it seems to be, and if I understand correctly, it is at the discretion of the president, you know, but my question is, is that how can things keep being added to city council committee agenda when in the past no other council person has been able to do that and we've been told that we have to wait two weeks before our items can be placed. Not only were there items additionally placed on there, but then there were items that were in different committees that were taken out of certain committees and placed somewhere else without speaking with the chair. And as a courtesy, all of us have call us as colleagues, even if I have an issue that is <coughs> supposed to go in economic development, I speak to that chair and I ask that chair for that particular item to be placed in their committee as they would do myself if they have something to be <coughs> placed. We all place things in committee and then they were removed out of those committees and placed somewhere else without any type of communication with any of us as council. And I'm just trying to really figure out how is it that even the day before the council meeting that an item could be added to the committee agenda without all of us having to consent to it. And in the past, we've not been able to do that. Okay. Uh, we, just a second, Mr. Sill. Mr. Sill. Mr. 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 We're stretching way out to what we're supposed to be talking about, but an answer to the question. Put in the paper, Brett. Uh, an answer to the question, number one, as far as I'm concerned, if something of some significance appears beyond the deadline, whether it's upstairs or downstairs, we always try to make provision. I admit 
the deputy clerks, the clerks don't like to do that, but notwithstanding that, if it's important enough, we will do it, number one. Number two, uh, I, as president, reserve the right to place these items in the proper committee. All we did was change it, and we were told, they were told, it mentioned to you, Mr. The people, and I asked Mr. Jones to be sure to mention that to you. He may or may not have done it. We had a conversation I, about it. Sir? We had a conversation over the phone no, well, concerning For which I apologize if it wasn't done, right. but I don't, I put these committees, we have committees, and we don't want something just because a person has a problem in the district, if it's not under your jurisdiction, it goes into the proper committee and it can be expressed at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think I don't want to say anything more because we have a time constraints and I want to stick to this. He's asking for an audience more or less to, for an explanation, I think uh, it's a courtesy to him, and I, I'd like to have you. <coughs> and Mr. Jones and I did have a conversation, but we no. did not discuss that they would be changed to any other committees. Is that <coughs> correct? What we discussed was, I called you and I said, well, Mitzi, I, well, hold on, okay. let me say okay. this, okay? I called and I said, Mitzi, what in the world does cutting trees during power lines have to do with zoning? Correct. That is a public works issue. <laughs> what in the world does Bolton Avenue Spark Program have to do with zoning? That's an economic development issue. I told you that I felt as though that was done so that I would not have anything in my committee to discuss. That is the conversation we had. It got changed no, because it was put in the it. proper committee. Here, you didn't I'm, I'm say sorry, that to I'm me. I'm sorry, we're, that's all subject. We're not. gonna go back to this item and y'all can argue about that later. That's interesting. Uh, can I just <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Could I just give you the council ordinance, <coughs> Ms. Ms. Gibson? Speak. Can the public speak, please? Well, let me give her the council ordinance that governs committees. It's 224 section B. It says questions related to various departments of city operations will be generally handled by the appropriate committee. And I assume that means the committee with jurisdiction. The open meetings law allows an agenda to be amended Anytime, 24 hours prior to the meeting. Okay. All right. There are two members from the public that asked to speak uh, on this item. Uh, there's no time on this. So, uh, Pete Gordon, Jr. I'll wave. I'll wave. I can't right now. Okay, Doug. Uh, Milton Gordon. <coughs> uh, three minutes, sir. Thank you all very much. And uh, I congratulate Mr. Silver for being elected president and Ms. Gibson for being <laughs> vice president. I'm here today because this, but Mr. Jones, a man that I have a lot of respect for, he's the type of man that we want to lead. I was raised in Samtown. And I'm not a politically correct person. But the Pastor Paul said, when I was a child, I speak as a child. And now that I'm a man, foolish things are put away. And this is nothing but a lynch mob. This is ridiculous. This is, if Mr. Jones, if a white man was doing Mr. Jones, would some of you have done this man? This town would be up in arms. And the first thing you holler about is racism. It is time to put your petty differences aside and leave this city. <coughs> we have seen millions of dollars leave this city because of foolishness and lack of leadership. This man offered to serve and represent his district, and I admire him for that. And what, the way he's been prosecuted, it is wrong. I too was in Baton Rouge, and February of 11, I was in Tyler, Texas, talking to a lawyer friend of mine. He did this for me for nothing. And he said the same thing. This is plain stupidity. It is childish. I live in this city. And I love this city. And the citizens are tired of this foolishness and they're tired of being represented by individuals. You break the charter on one hand and then you claim to be a professional on the other and know everything. If any man lack of wisdom, let him ask it of God. If you got problems, pray about it and ask for understanding. And I'm sure God will direct you to your attorney to ask before you speak. I see what this man went through. And I'm here to tell him today, and do like the Apostle Paul, where you've done all the stand, stand, and be encouraged. But we're tired of it. I'm tired of the snickering, that very unprofessional on the city council. This is about the future of our city. 
The world is watching us. This is not about Milton Gordon. It's not about any of you. It is about the future of Alexandria. I love my city. <coughs> I want to see our city grow. We need to talk to CEOs to bring jobs in here. And regardless of whether you're black or white, prosperity is the same on every, on, on every hand. We need to educate our children. We, we, we need to build an economy base that we can do that. They don't want to talk with you with foolishness like this. We must conduct ourselves as men and as women and be civil about it. I thank, thank you. There being no other uh, forms before me, I'll ask that uh, Mr. Jones will make his remarks, and uh, we need to move on to the next committee as uh, we're already uh, to that point. I'll be brief. Um, <coughs> it takes a lot to be a leader. It takes a lot to, uh, for leadership. I take this job seriously. When I took this job as being a councilman, I took a $20,000 pay cut because I wanted to do this for this community. But now I can understand, <laughs> all we want to do is fight. I actually went through the process of being just as <laughs> just as crooked and just as mean and just as snarling as the person who prosecuted me, Mr. Amon. I actually went to the point of looking up information about his history, about him being a former Klansman, about him disliking African Americans, disliking Catholics, and disliking Jews. I went through all that work of finding this information. And the same people who sit down at the table and talk about Black History Month. The same people who sit down and talk about what Martin Luther King said when he wanted to sit down at the table of brotherhood. The same people who sit down each and every day telling us that we want to work for Alexandria and do what's best. I'm tired of the games. I am not going anywhere. You want to get tired of trying to attack me. I'm not going anywhere. I am going to stay. You're not going to get rid of me. November the 6th, you'll have that opportunity. But I'm going to lead with conviction. I'm going to lead with, 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 I'm going to lead with integrity. I'm going to lead with what got me here. My whole life, of 28 years of existence, I've led my life in integrity. And it's been because of the people that's been around me at church. It's been the people that's been around me in my community. And it's been the people that's been around me in my whole life. I'm not backing down. I'm not going to join your side. I'm not going to get in your circle. I'm not going to be your buddy. I'm going to be the friend of the community. And if people want to do dealings with someone who went on a blog and put a lynch, a, 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 a piece of rope on a blog and turned around and said it was a freedom of expression. No, it's not a freedom of expression. It's a freedom of terrorism. And for you to sit there and to befriend this person, shame on you. But I'm not going to sit up here and do this. I'm not even going to show this crap because you know what? It doesn't even matter anymore. I'm not going to run away. You're not going to scare me. And you can continue to do these things all day long. But you're not hurting me. You're hurting the city. You're hurting Alexandria. You're hurting the future of this community. People, CEOs, look at this. They look on the town talk and they look on these websites to see this stuff. You think they're going to come to a community that we always air our dirty laundry? And I almost became just like you. I almost became just like you. And I will not do it. I will not do it. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> I refuse to sit up here and to entertain this <coughs> foolishness. I'm not doing it. Y'all can have at it. I put this on the agenda because it was going to be hidden. It was going to be hidden away until November. But that's not how I operate. I operate, I believe everything should be put in the light. Everything should be put in the light. If you're a public servant, act like one. Conduct yourself as one. Be a leader. Stop playing games with people's money and time. If you're going to be a leader, be a leader. Hands down. I'm just being honest with you. And that's just the way we need to start leading this council chamber. Let's stop playing these games. 
People are tired of this. There is no big race issue that's about to happen in the middle of MacArthur Drive and folks are going to attack each other. This is not the 1960s. This is 2012. We go to school together. This man didn't want us to go to school together, but thank God somebody had sense to let us go to school together. And then we side with him. I, I, I'm done. I've had enough. I'm done. All right. Without any further comment, we'll move to the next <coughs> committee, which is utility. We have uh, members uh, Jim Ballard, Roosevelt, and myself. The first item on the committee is to consider final adoption of an ordinance <coughs> amending and reenacting section 26-62.1 of the city code for large commercial industrial natural gas rate structure. Uh, this item is, was brought up uh, previously uh, and it addresses a need for industrial development for large gas users. Uh, folks that are similar to uh, Union Tank Car, uh, many asphalt uh, producing <coughs> processing firms and such as that and in order to us for us to uh, have our economic <coughs> development folks to uh, uh, encourage folks uh, and businesses of this nature to come here uh, we need a structure a, a natural gas rate structure such as this uh, would you like to make comments on it okay sure thank you mr. Fowler um, this is book item number 22, if you want to look at that, and it applies to um, <coughs> commercial customers who use 48 million cubic feet or greater annually. So you can see that this, this is um, very large industrial users. Previously, our rate structure uh, for these users only went up to 10,000 cubic feet per month. And we are extending those steps. It's a, a declining block, and we're